play to learn preschool. Woohoo, sound. Yay. Why does it do that? I did nothing different. Thank you for telling me. Thanks for letting us know. So you don't have to let us know now if you're watching it on replay. We hear that there's sound. Awesome. Okay, we are here this afternoon to share with you what we do with our pre-K students who are four and turning five years old in the morning for their arrival activity. We refer to it as morning work with them. You might remember last week, we told you what we do with our three-year-olds, and we shared some of those name activities. So each morning when they arrive, they get settled with their backpacks and their shoes and their jackets and come down to the carpet where we have their name activities set up. This is just to give us a couple of minutes, um, you know, as everybody's getting settled and they can work on the letters of their name. We do a similar thing with our pre-K students, um, but for the most part, our pre-K students are returning. They come to us for two years. So they know their names. Hooray! <laughs> if we've done a good pretty job, much. they yeah. pretty much know their names. So, instead of doing name work, we do this morning work that we're going to share with you today. Um, we call these folder games, and um, I like them because, for a number of reasons. First, they're um, equivalent skill-wise to worksheets. Okay. However, we don't do any worksheets ever at Playtime Free School. There are a number of reasons why we choose not to do worksheets with our students, primarily because worksheets are not developmentally appropriate for three and four-year-old students. But secondarily, do you know what happens when students do an activity that's not necessarily appropriate for them or that's a little bit frustrating or hard? The behavior and there's no amount of singing that would help with that. <laughs> we could sing. Sit and do your worksheet. It's not going to happen. It doesn't matter what we would be singing. It would not do anything. It wouldn't. Um, and then when the students are frustrated and they're acting out, we get frustrated with their behavior and the fact that they are frustrated. We get frustrated and then we eat more chocolate. I was going to say, and there's no amount of chocolate. <laughs> Our exercise regimen cannot right, afford that exactly, amount of chocolate. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway. Um, we still do work on kindergarten readiness skills, just not with pencil and paper activities. So what we're going to share with you today is the morning work activities that we're doing. So I said that I like them for a number of reasons. First, because they're comparable to worksheets as far as teaching the students skills. But second, I like them because they're really easy to store. I can yeah. store, you know, a hundred different file folders just in a crate. Um, we like them because we are able to differentiate the instruction that our students need. So if we have students who are still working on learning their letters, then in the morning we pull a folder game that targets their letter work. If we have students who know their letters and they're starting to learn their letter sounds, we can pull one for their letter sounds. Easy enough, we pull a letter sound folder. We have kids who um, can identify the numbers but don't necessarily um, count the quantities correctly, we give them a counting one. And so each morning we pick a folder game. Specifically and, for the individual child. Absolutely. And we put it at their spot on the carpet, just like we do with our threes in their name work. Their name work. And so as soon as they're done unpacking, then they go down to the carpet and start doing their folder game. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. And then we'll talk logistically about how we check them and keep track of what they've done. So, Do you want me to start? Let's, yeah, so the very first month of school, or the first two weeks of school, we gave them all the same morning work. Oh. Our goal was to choose activities, the same skill, um, that they could all do independently with success. Yes. So Jem's gonna show you what we had out for them the okay. first couple weeks of school. So we start with visual discrimination. So here's the front of the backwards. I know it's backwards. Jamie has not reprinted everything to face the other way, so we know it is. Okay. It's not backwards for the kids. Yeah, it's not backwards for them. <laughs> it's just for you. Just on the selfie cam. Okay, so this is the front of our, um, one of our visual discrimination morning work folders. We have the, on the back we have pieces. We ran those Ziploc bags through my Xyron machine, so they have permanent adhesive on the back, and we just stick the baggie. And visual discrimination is a matching skill. It's a precursor to being able to identify letters and numbers and reading. And so what they have to do is they look at the inside of the folder and then they have to find the pictures that match. So my little guy has got a green jacket on, very cool. And 
if it was laying flat, which last time we tried to, <laughs> everything slid off the table. So we're just gonna hold we're it. We're learning as we go. Thanks yes, for your patience so with us. So they just match the pictures. And they would go through and match every, um, every noodle person that we have in here. So um, I should say, a long time ago, we've been using the folders a long time ago. 10 years ago. <laughs> 11 years. We, a long time ago. What's we didn't do it the first year. Those little, they were only three. We, oh, you're right. Okay. So 10 years. Whatever. Ten years right. Ten years. I'm not always right. I'm very rarely right. That's what I have to notice when I am. Um, we had made folder games out of like a teacher um, workbook. We've actually tossed most of them because Gemma hates them because they're ugly. And so <laughs> Gemma primarily is the one who pulls the folder games in the morning. I do. And she finds the ones that she thinks are not visually appealing. And so she just tosses them in the trash. And she'll say like, something you like, you weren't fond of that one, way. You were just like, <laughs> no, I not don't really. mind. <laughs> something cuter. I'm sure you'll make something that meets our needs. But we do have a handful that are from like an old teacher resource book. Um, so And they're still okay. They're still us. okay. So like this one, they have to find the things that go together. So it's like a, a toothbrush and they have to put the toothpaste, shoes and they have to put the socks. So they're just simple little activities. Um, but I did make a bunch of sets, which is what I wanted to say. So this um, visual discrimination, which is actually matching is a set, I think there's, oh gosh, I didn't look, there's, there's a lot of them, like 10 of them, and they're all different pictures. There's fall leaves, we have one that's um, candy and ice cream. And some are more complicated than the other. So this one with that's the friends a hard one. is tricky because they're, they're all similar, they're just wearing different clothes maybe. Yeah. And the leaves are, are more straightforward. There are a couple, um, which we're gonna show you that are totally free to print out on my on TPT, our TPT store, which is Play to Learn Preschool on Teachers Pay Teachers. So this one is a good one for Halloween time. It's different candies and candy corns, and it's free. So if you go to Play to Learn Preschool on Teachers Pay Teachers, I'll drop the link up at the top when we're done. Uh, you can just print this out for free. It comes with a cover, the two pages for the the two pages for the inside, and then the little pieces that go on the top. It's all free. So visual discrimination is what we did for the first couple of weeks. And then last week and this week, we've been working on another skill, which is categorization. So this is requiring them to think a little bit, maybe more so than the visual discrimination. So like I said, we do try to differentiate, but for the first month of school, we try to keep it pretty easy. So these categorization ones um, look like this, what goes together. And this one, for example, they have to look at each row, and there's a line there, I don't know if you can see it, and figure out which thing does not belong. So red apple, red ladybug, red fire hydrant, green frog, which thing does not belong. And then they take one of these. You can use anything. You can use anything. Um, we're using poker chips. <laughs> Chips. We'll call them counting. We'll call them counting chips, yes. counters, <laughs> and they just mark which thing doesn't belong. So on the second row, it's an orange pumpkin, orange cat, blue truck, orange carrot, and they just mark which thing doesn't. And belong. And they would go through each yeah. and put it on. And so this is another set that's in my TPT store. We had one of these from a teacher resource book, and it was so ugly. And some of the things were really. I might throw that one. She threw it away, and so then I had to make a couple of more. Um, but we have what goes together with colors. These are vehicles, like which vehicle belongs together. It's a blimp, a helicopter, a shopping cart, and an airplane. Which one doesn't belong? Um, of course, it's a shopping cart because it's not transportation, really. Um, a bike, a scooter, a skateboard, and skis. And it's the skis because of no wheels. Do you want to tell the next one? Okay, go for it. I was just going to say, when, when they're telling us about this, you need to have them really speak to you. That's the whole point. You want them to be able to tell you why they have chosen the item that they've chosen. Um, it's sometimes very one. interesting. This one we find really this interesting. Set. This middle one, go for it. So we have a school bus, a dump truck, what is that thing? A bulldozer, oh. and a cement truck. So we, when Jamie did this, you thought it would be the school bus right. that they would choose. Um, and I agreed. I was like, yeah, that would be definitely. That would be not my instruction. Thing. Yes. Yep. That's not what they've been telling us. Every single kid picks this bulldozer because, because it doesn't have wheels. 
But as long as they can tell us their reasoning behind it, that's fine. Fine square makes Absolutely. perfect sense. Absolutely, that makes sense. So categorization is another good one. Um, like I said, I think there's eight in the set on my TPT store. This one is animals. So which animals don't go together? Giraffe, elephant, zebra, seahorse, and they just pick the one in market. So categorization. And then after we've kind of taught them the routine of how to take the pieces out, do their morning work, and we check it, then um, we really start to differentiate. So we're gonna show you a couple of the ones. We'll tell you how we check it in a minute, yeah. Um, so we'll just show you a couple of other options and then I'll talk to you about how we manage it and keep track of which ones they've done. So this is a good one Gemma's gonna show you. It's a font sort. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> And I need, my, I need some glasses, I can't see it. <laughs> and font starts are really good for students who are just learning their letters, because they don't actually have to know the letter to be able to sort it. And if you print this one off of my TPT store, I've changed it a little bit since I first did it to reduce the ink. So yours won't have the blue background, just save some ink. But what they do is look at the letters, and they have to decide, is it a capital A or a lowercase a, and just sort them. Super simple but it's really good for them to be able to notice the difference. The capital has straight lines and a point, and the lowercase a has um, you know, the circle and the line. So they just sort the pictures on here. Capital, lower, capital, lower. Easy enough. And there's a set of these, I think there's 18, don't quote me, because I didn't look before we came on, but we do not have them sort C, because listen, those letters look exactly the same. We do not have them sort O. X, W, Z, there's a few that it's so silly, there's no way they can tell, you know, other than sort of comparing, oh, that one's only two thirds the size of the other one. Can't, uh, can't, I can't remember. But anyway, we try to make it so that they can be successful. Here's a couple of others that we do. These that I'm gonna show you are all free from um, my Teachers Pay Teachers store. So hop on after you're done watching the video and print them off, you can use them with your students. This one is a number matching game. So on the little pieces, there are apples with numbers. And then there are the baskets with the numbers written in a different font. And they just have to look at the number, like 11, and then put it in the correct basket. It's not a counting game. It really is just for number matching and identification. And so that's free. Here's another free one. For our students who are learning how to um, make the letter sounds, this is an initial consonant sort. So it's let words that start with M and words that start with P. And it's just a mat on the inside. They use the pieces and say what they have, like mushroom. mushroom. It's gonna go on M. Uh -huh. Here we go. Paint, they're Paint. gonna set on the P. And they just sort through these. I think there's a whole bunch of 16 pieces or 18 pieces, and sort them through. I'll show you one more and then we'll tell you how we check it. So here's another one that's free. This is a rhyming one. This is actually a little bit harder. Uh, and the inside there are some baskets with a picture on them. And what they have to do is look at the egg. This one is dig and rhyme it with pig. So this egg goes in this basket. This is an, you like the rhyming ones. Here's why Gemma likes the rhyming ones. Go ahead and say it. Wait. No, no, it's okay. You can tell them why I like the rhyming The kids ones. all think Gemma speaks. Some of my daughter always speaks. think I speak Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. It's really just English. Yeah. But she'll say, what rhymes with Bon? And the kids are like, huh? <laughs> Bah, right, or just yawn, right, with bah. I tried to put on my best American accent, and it just sounds awful. I was like, Jamie, hold on, you have to do this one, I can't do this one. Miss Jamie will say it for you, and I'm like, barn, yarn, okay, see how ugly it sounds, but it rhymes. So when Gemma, it's funny, because the kids are like, what word are you saying? And then like, bon, yawn. And some words that I think rhyme, you don't think I rhyme. I can't think of any of I do. Okay. Ball. Doll. No, I feel like they don't. Maybe all my all the people in England are like, that rhymes. Oh, you've got the strange no, American accent now. 
<laughs> what about this one? Like if you're trying to catch a butterfly with a net. Say that word. Caught. And then what about a, a dot? Caught and dot do not rhyme. <laughs> in my world, caught and dot totally rhyme. And in Gemma's world, they don't they rhyme. Don't rhyme. What are you gonna what? do? How do they <laughs> this is a rhyme? Oh, anyway, I'm sorry we got so a little sidetracked. Yeah. A little sidetracked, the rhyming. Okay, and so what they do is when they're finished with their morning work, we just take a second. We only have nine kids and there's two of us, so it works pretty easily. Um, but we just have them read us what they've written, or if it's something we just glance at, we glance at it. And then we, on the back, have a student list, and we make a little note. So if they've done a um, really great job and we feel like they've mastered this skill, we give them a plus. If we think they need another opportunity to practice it, we just give them a dash or a minus. And then we can remember, we'll make a little note. He's so close, just needs a couple more, um, couple more chances to practice it. And so then we can pull it out again in a month after we've worked on that skill. And if they've got it, then we just change the minus to a plus. That's another good way, easy. Um, Hot is the aw sound. Dot is the short o sound. I'm with Gemma. Thank you. Thank you. In my... Are you from England? Are you from England? Lori, are you from US? See, that's going to be the question. Because in my... Is your crazy We're going to... We're, we're, <laughs> I don't have a crazy accent. <laughs> I don't feel like I have a crazy accent. I was born in the Midwest. It's just how we talk. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. <laughs> anyway. We just keep a little, um, a little checklist on the back. She's laughing at me again. And we can just mark off. Where is, where is Lori from? Did she nope, say? Iowa. Iowa. Iowa, I was born in Illinois. We need to do a poll. We do need to do a poll. Does caught and dot rhyme in your world? That's the question of the day. In my world, that totally rhymes. Doesn't in mine. <laughs> Iowa. Right, mom, just, mom, I think oh. we need to get on board here. Gemma's mom is going to say that it doesn't rhyme. Oh. Mom watches every day, and I forgot to say Hi, Gemma's mom. I forgot to say hi, my mom. Yeah, hi, Gemma. hi, guys. Hi, ladies. Okay, so that's how we do it. We check them off, and it's very successful. It's really quick, too. Um, it probably, you know, it's like another five minutes. And something that, that I find when I put them out, because I put them out in the morning before they come, if I remember that the day before they've struggled, and it's been tricky for them, then I give them one that I know that they're going to be successful with so that it boosts their confidence up. We don't want to make this an exercise of them being frustrated that they can't do this because we're trying to yeah. get them to be able to be successful at school. So this, give them something that you think they're going to do great with, it boosts their confidence and then maybe try something a little bit harder the next day. Good advice. Okay. That's advice. <laughs> okay, so that's what we have for our pre-K morning work. If you have any questions, we'll be back on. See, now look, Carrie says they rhyme, Kirsten says they don't. So yeah, this we're gonna interesting subject. We're gonna do a little statistics on this. Jen will probably make a chart <laughs> tallies to see chart. who the winner is. Yeah. Um, we I don't know what I was saying. I don't know either anyone. I'm all like root for Jamie. Caught that. dot. <laughs> Listen, people, it sounds the same to me. Caught dot. We'll have to have a whole <laughs> we'll have a whole segment of what we think. What about barn and yarn? Now that definitely that rhymes. rhymes. Barn and yarn. Barn and yarn. <laughs> My other one is the names. The Aaron and Anna. Oh. So here's another one. So, my, so we have a boy, a student, and his name is Aaron. Which in my world is pronounced exactly the same as the girl name, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. I would say Aaron and Aaron. To me, that sounds the same. And so she doesn't <laughs> hear it. She doesn't hear the difference. It's like, how can you not? I it's do an hear and an it. A. It's Aaron and Aaron. I think I hear it when you say it, but I can't reproduce those sounds out of my mouth. It still sounds like <laughs> Aaron and Aaron. <laughs> This is how oh, this is how our days go. <laughs> this we is how we keep ourselves occupied. Ten, eleven years. And Twelve. We're still <laughs> having these conversations. Like, how can you not hear the sound? What is, why can't you hear this? Why did you call him Aaron when his name is Aaron? Aaron. <laughs> like it's the same name. <laughs> anyway. Oh gosh. Anyway, you can chime in on Aaron and Aaron too. Yeah. Must be a Midwest thing. From Minnesota. Just so Jenny, my question is: You're from the Midwest. Do pot and dot rhyme in your world in Minnesota? 
do some morning work. <laughs> yeah, this is the most important thing. Do morning work. Look on Jamie's TBT site. Because Print the free ones. Right. There's a ton of yeah. free ones on there. So And they're really easy to store. The kids are going to love them because they're so, <laughs> they're so shiny. And vote for Cotton Dog. <laughs> And Aaron and Aaron, it's the same. <laughs> it's not the, we're gonna have a segment we've decided on Fridays. Fridays. Fun Fridays. And this one week. of our things is going to be why you should have an American friend. Why you need life. a British friend. Yes. And how to understand your British friend. It'll be like or a transmission friend. And this is gonna be quite Friday. Quite an interesting discussion yes. I think we're going to have. Tomorrow, if you're still hanging in with us, you're the best. <laughs> We are going to share with you how we teach the students to greet us in the morning. Oh, you'll like this one. You'll like this one. And there are some students who um, maybe struggle with language or shyness or maybe you're even, you know, um, for students we've had in the past who are maybe a little on the spectrum or have language delays. And so this is a uh, technique that we use with them and we want to share with you tomorrow. So that's all. We'll you guys are awesome. We'll be calm tomorrow. Promise. Promise. We always say we're going to be calm, and then you say something like Aaron and Aaron, and I say, what? <laughs> anyway, I think we're going to have fun Bye. playing and learning with your kids today. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.